Hi, I'm Rich Mayo and this is Mach 1 Games. Today I'd like to do something a little bit different for this channel. I'd like to have some fun and talk about dice and talk about ways that dice may have been used to create cheats and shed a little bit of light on those and give you some strategies for preventing this at your table. I was first exposed to uh, dice cheats uh, when I attended uh, tournaments and conventions uh, in the late 70s and early 80s. And the cheats were introduced uh, so that dungeon masters at the tables could recognize uh, that a player was employing one of these tactics and to stop it because the early tournaments quite often had uh, uh, prizes and they wanted to make sure that uh, people were doing things uh, fairly and well. The teams that solved the modules and uh, got through them. I think I've still got some of those old tournament modules uh, and convention modules uh, um, in, uh, uh, in my stack of goodies. In fact, I think I've got an old uh, uh, Lost Caverns of uh, Cho Saint before it was ever published. Just a... Uh, held together with a stapler and the uh, maps and the uh, original typewriter um, content. But anyhow, I digress. So the first type of cheat I want to talk about is an unfair dice. And there's many degrees of unfair dice and many ways to make a dice unfair. And uh, the first type of way that a a dice could be unfair. So a dice could just be marginally unfair. It can be um, not a hundred percent true. And most dice that you get, nice dice or chessex or whatever, uh, they come from a uh, a tumbler. And the way that they're made is they're not precision made to find tolerances. So uh, you can't guarantee both a uh, a perfect density and perfect edges and perfect shape because they've been uh, rounded and modified. Now the only way to know uh, what a dice like this um, is uh, moderately unfair because these dice are going to roll pretty darn true is to, is to uh, roll these dice 10,000 times uh, measure out the results take a look and, and uh, you can see what fraction of a percentage you might be picking up on a particular dice normally I don't consider that cheating uh, and in fact I uh, I love to pick up a new set of dice for each character that I play when I'm a player uh, just so that I'm not using the same set of dice and I sort of like the fact that built into those dice is uh, a certain predilection towards one number or another that I don't know about. I'm going to find out during the play or probably not. It's going to be so minute I'll never notice uh, but I like knowing it. I don't know which of the dice roll uh, a little askew or what those probabilities are, um, but there you have it. Now there's a number of uh, types of dice that um, uh, that roll uh, a lot truer, like a set of Zochi dice. Here's some modern Zochi dice that um, are manufactured to a much greater tolerance. That is an old Zochi dice. I'm going to talk more about this guy in a moment. Here's another old Zochi and here's another old probably a Gamma World dice. I'll talk about those ones in a second. Uh, but they're they're made to a um, a different uh, standard. Uh, also to made to a different standard are something like these. Uh, you can see that that is an anodized metal dice. It's machined uh, it's blued uh, under a lamp, and that, uh, you can hear the way that they roll. They're very precise because they're machined. They're hundreds and hundreds of dollars more expensive per set than uh, um, than uh, Zochi dice, and um, uh, they're going to be uh, relatively accurate. They're also going to be uh, large projectile weapons. You can also get uh, dice made out of exotic woods. Um, or uh, stone, yeah, there's a stone dice in the pile. Um, 
you can get uh, stone dice as well. And just because they are uh, consistent density and uh, clean edges and uh, machined true, uh, one can assume uh, that it's going to roll uh, relatively well. So uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is these little things. This is a dice, and you can see that it's gone through, um, well, a number of wars. Uh, it might be an old Gamma World dice, but if you notice the way that it chips and frays, um, those chips uh, are going to wear down some of the edges, and over time, uh, that dice is going to become less and less random. Now, who knows in what uh, area it's going to go uh, less random, but um, it's important because if one side, say the side with the 20, becomes quite round, then it's going to have a hard time landing on the opposite side. Which on a new dice, any modern dice, yeah, the 20 is opposed by the 1. And on um, old dice, actually, it's not true. If you look at this one here, the 20 is in fact opposed by the 10. And there's actually a reason for this. So it's not like a, uh, a standard casino dice where the 6 is opposed from the 1. It was on... Um, on old sets of dice, and I told you I'd come back to this old Zochi dice, you actually did not have the numbers 1 to 20 on a 20-sided dice. You had the numbers 1 to 10, or 0 to 9, excuse me, repeated twice. And what you would do is you would color one color for the tens, one color for the units, for the ones. So you could use this as a percentile dice. You roll the two 20s. And that one color, you're using the colors, you know which dice is, is which. Then uh, you've used your percentile dice. And uh, when you're rolling a 20, it's the same thing. Um, in this case, I rolled a 4 because I could say that the uh, white 4s are the units and the red 4s are the 10. So this type of dice obviously is susceptible to the cheat that I could miscolor this dice and... Um, one would uh, uh, hope that a uh, player um, wouldn't do this kind of things, but at tournaments, especially in the late 70s, early 80s, um, miscolored dice were a thing, and people were smart enough to realize that you shouldn't miscolor your, uh, your zeros so that there's um, uh, the person never rolls a, a 10, they're always rolling 20s. Uh, but if you pick a, another couple numbers, say 15, 15 is a pretty good roll, uh, you no longer have a 5 on your dice, you have two 15s. Uh, that's not immediately uh, noticeable. It's not something that you can check really, really quickly. Um, so thank God for the advent of the actual 20-sided dice, although I do hold a certain nostalgia for the versatility of the... Um, um, the old school uh, D20 percentiles. Uh, they roll quite nicely. Uh, it's a nice shape. And the 10-sided te dice is not a platonic solid. So it's not actually as, um, as fair and random as the 20-sided dice. I don't think, check with the number file, um, has done a series on dice. Anyhow, so... We can misnumber dice. You can also buy uh, dice that have uh, different numbering schemas, um, right? But uh, you could also um, buy blank dice and put your own numbers on them. Or you could uh, take a Dremel to a dice and you can change some of the numbers there. So you can take your Dremel to your dice. Uh, shave down some edges. You can take some very fine sandpaper, shave down some edges, and you can um, uh, um, alter alter numbers. Or using dice like these, weighted dice. So if you watch how these dice roll, you're going to see that they return sixes far too frequently. 
and imagine rolling up a character. Pretty much every character you roll up is going to be straight 18 uh, using this set of dice. And people would catch on um, quite quickly uh, to that kind of thing. Um, so obviously watch out for that. But at the table, that doesn't happen that frequently. I mean, that's pretty, if you're playing with people who are bringing loaded dice to the table, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty... Uh, that's pretty egregious, pretty silly, um, but you know you just don't. Now, that those aren't the type of cheats that are normal at a table. The types of cheats that are more frequent at a table would be somebody getting up to rolling shenanigans, and I'll define rolling shenanigans as rolling in an unfair way. This is a moderately fair set of dice right here. I have four six-sided dice. I just grab them out of the pile. They're not all perfectly the same and they're not they're not casino dice. Uh, casino dice are manufactured to very exacting specs and again have those sharp edges. But these are relatively normal dice and they're going to return relatively normal rolls as I uh, cast them out onto the table and who doesn't love the clatter of dice on a table Ooh, us nerds right I'm trying to figure out what the uh name would be for somebody who's a lover of dice I'm not sure if it's uh my latin is so lost i'm thinking eactophile eacta. i'm thinking from alia eacta est is what Caesar said when he crossed the Rubicon, which is the dice is cast. Um, but I don't remember whether it's the Ealia or the Acta that was actually die. Yeah, he, uh, he only did a couple of uh, uh, courses of Latin, a couple of courses of Greek, and then let it uh, leave my brain. So it is fully left. Somebody wants to... Uh, Tell me what somebody who loves dice is in the comments. Now you're going to watch me roll some cheats. And there's a nice 14. Uh, that one actually wasn't a cheat, but there was another 14. There is a 17. That was definitely a cheat. That was a 17. That was definitely a cheat. That was a 16. That was a cheat. That is a 17. That was a cheat. Now, this isn't going to be as much of a cheat. That was a 15. And now I'm showing that I'm not a very practiced cheat. I'm just going to roll a few more times open. Then I'm going to initiate the cheat again. And there is a 16. There is a 16. There is a 16. There is a 17. Now, the six-sided dice is easier to do this type of cheat with uh, because it's a flat dice and a little bit easier to manipulate. In Las Vegas, they require that you roll the dice out of your hands and it hits a bumper. Uh, the bumper is a, uh, a pyramid uh, bumper and it ensures that the dice deflects off the end and then bounces back onto the table and you have a randomized dice. Um, but with six-sided dice in my hands, I can get up to shenanigans. And here are the shenanigans that I'm getting up to. The first method is to hook the dice. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm actually hooking this dice. I roll three, leave this one behind, and then I can shoot the other one across the table. And you see how I launched it all the way across the table, spun it out from my finger... And it's traveled six feet away, so I'm going to have to shift to actually even go get it. Actually, I'll grab a different dice. But it still landed on the six because it was not actually rolling. It was spinning. I placed it and spun it out. Now, you can employ this technique. Notice I'm picking up the six first. And it doesn't look that odd because when you look at my hand as I'm rolling... It makes a normal shape. 
you don't notice that I've got one of the four dice is not uh, moving correctly. And the fact that it is going to travel across the table um, uh, means that it seems fair. Now, this is even a worse cheat. You can see that I have now cupped two dice in my hand, and there's a 17. So, in actual fact, what I did is I didn't roll the two sixes. I rolled the two sixes, and then on the two dice that I wasn't controlling, I, um, I, um, I managed to get a five. Now, I, again, I'm not particularly practiced at this cheat. You can also do it by hooking the dice this way. Um, so stacking across, it does make your hand shape a little bit funny, um, but it actually allows you to control them better because you might have a hard time grasping those two um, with your pinky. Uh, in fact, I think on the last roll, my six, one of my sixes spun out uh, and turned into a five and I might've got a six on the other dice. Um, that was a really obvious cheat. Um, so you got to watch for that. That was a much nicer one. Big wide throw and uh, nice high results. So this type of, uh, now I just seem, can't seem to do it with any kind of uh, subtlety right now. Um, now in D&D, you're not rolling six-sided dice. Uh, an awful lot, um, but in a game like Savage Worlds, where you perhaps have uh, one wild dice as your D6, and maybe you're rolling a D12 with it, this is a normal roll, and with exploding dice, I get to re-roll those sixes. It's a huge advantage. Now I got a 12 and a six. I re-roll my six and get a one, so I'm going to stick with the uh, 12, uh, 12 plus 4 is 16, that's my rule, if you know how Savage Worlds works. But the fact that it doesn't matter what you roll, you've always got that 6, that creates uh, 10, that's a success with the raise in Savage World. So, um, yeah, you're off to the, off to the race is pretty, pretty darn early. Okay, so um, that is rolling the sixes. Now, probably something you guys are more interested in is, well, can it be done with the 20s? Well, with my uh, size hands, uh, yes, I can do it with a 20. I prefer bigger dice to try this with, but if I have two large dice, you can see I throw it and there's my natural 20. So, um, it's hard to do this if you're not rolling with advantage or disadvantage. Um, but, but because you, you want the other dice to sort of distract uh, on the throw and make it look natural. But you can see how I've successfully rolled a 20 and it still travels across the table and moves. Uh, now, mind you, it stays closer and you're more prone to have it. Oh, no, there's double 20s, right? So um, you're more prone to have it uh, um, give you problems with a 20. Now you can move down a size category. Um, again, I'm not particularly practiced, but uh, uh, doing the cheat with, with a dice this size is certainly possible, although I failed on that attempt. And that one, a little bit more obvious what I was doing, but I certainly got my natural 20. And you want to remember that most of the time, uh, people are not watching somebody as they set up and prepare the dice. So there's a couple of things you can do about this. Uh, first thing is if somebody's rolling onto into a dice tray, it actually creates a little bit better of a roll because you can't get your hand down um, as flat into the tray. And it would look really weird if you did roll that way and see even that little drop caused me to mess up on the 20. If I'm coming from a height, it's a little harder to cheat. Now, 
Having said that, there's people who could probably toss a dice across the floor or spin a dice across the room and have it land on the face that they want all the time. There's people with a lot more talent than me. Um, again, I don't practice this. I don't, I don't play this way. Um, it's just important to know uh, what to look for. Obviously, a dice tower with fair dice coming down is a good way to do it. Uh, and if you're really... Um, uh, concerned, uh, go the casino route and install yourself a dice bumper at the end of the table. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about just before I close off is that if you find that you are playing with somebody who is cheating, uh, what you should do first detect that they're cheating, make sure that they know that they're doing it, and then think about why and try to take ownership of um, maybe what you're doing to contribute to that. Obviously it's going to be uh, their problem, but start asking yourself some questions, especially if you're the game master. Why is this player cheating? Uh, are there other power gamers at the table uh, and this person feels like they're lagging behind? Is there something? So so be aware. Uh, this is a game that we all play for um, fun now that you've got some of the tools to detect a cheat. Uh, now, please, please be responsible with what you've just learned. And number one, don't use it to cheat yourself. Number two, if you do spot a cheat, take a moment and think about why and what's going on and what's wrong with the table dynamic or with the person that's leading to this behavior. Because it's a game that we play for fun with imaginary characters. Um, it may be that this person is going through something emotionally and they're feeling over invested in their character and they can't bear uh, to have something happen to them it's the last calamity the last straw so um uh go easy to use it that as a warning sign if somebody's cheating which is a fairly um um uh, extreme response understand that's usually caused by some kind of uh, extreme reason and um uh, just because you now have the tool uh, to find out what's going on um, doesn't necessarily mean that you should uh, uh, just uh, rush in and start um, uh, start causing trouble for this person or confronting them. You you may want to. You may know them better. I'm not saying. I just want to add to this world things that are going to make this world better. And I don't want to see this uh, being used to find out, find those few people are having problems or whatever I'm piling on. Let's, let's be kind. So it's, it, I mean, it's just a game. If somebody um, uh, wants to cheat, um, think about the reasons why I've seen, I've seen players, um, cheat at my table and most of the time I wouldn't say a thing right um, understand and think about yourself and go well what am I doing wrong right because if, if, if they're, they're cheating well maybe you're not doing if it's you know it's only a little cheat once in a while um, under understand what that means just take it in perspective be a little bit moderate be a little bit kind or be a lot kind We'll be a little bit moderate and be a lot kind. And I'll see you next time with something um, of the more usual type that I um, do all thinky and stuff. All right. Have a great one and we'll catch you soon.